Hello and welcome back to London Cycle Routes. Today I'll be showing you how to cycle from London Bridge in central London to New Cross in south London. This ride takes about 25 minutes and you can do the whole thing on quiet streets and protected cycle lanes. By public transport the same journey takes around 20 minutes door to door so cycling is definitely time competitive even though there's a direct rail link. If you find this video useful or you just enjoy watching it then please don't forget to subscribe to the channel as I try to post new videos just like it every week. I'd also like to say a big thank you to everyone who supports the channel on Patreon. If you'd like to contribute as well you can find a link in the description below the video. Alright let's get going. So we're starting on Tooley Street just outside London Bridge Station and we're going to head down Bermondsey Street. This will get us under the railway and if you're travelling in this direction you'll benefit from a protected cycle lane which is protected from the cars by a kerb and some plastic wands. In the opposite direction you're on the main carriageway with the other vehicles but as you can see it's not too busy at all. The main reason for that is that the next section of Bermondsey Street which is just here is actually closed to through traffic with a single bollard making sure that the whole street is nice and quiet. One unusual feature is on the right here that may look like a protected cycle lane but it's actually a slightly badly done pavement extension which was put in during the Covid pandemic. Fortunately that design is temporary and it will be getting a proper pavement extension which will be installed later this year. We're now going to cut through a new build housing development called City Walk. You can see there's a no motorcycle sign on the gate there which generally implies that it's okay to cycle but do remember that this space is shared with pedestrians and go cautiously as a result. When you get to the end here you'll get a dropped curb but make sure that you pause and just check both ways on long lane as it can be quite busy and difficult to cross. This little route through Wilds Rent is a really useful connection to a cycleway that regular viewers of this channel will be familiar with and that's Cycleway 10, formerly known as Quietway 1. Don't miss the turning here to join it. For a lot of the next bit of the route we're going to be following Cycleway 10 which is a signposted route through the back streets of Southwark. Later on in the route we'll break from C10 and I'll show you how to get from there to New Cross as it doesn't go quite all the way. Generally C10 is a really pleasant ride and also really easy to follow. You get crossings like this one over Tower Bridge Road which make the busy roads really easy to negotiate and it mostly sticks to back streets but is still incredibly direct. If you looked at the map at the beginning you'll see that there's really no more direct way to get where we need to go. It's mostly quiet because of sections like this which are closed off with bollards which keep through traffic from using these back streets. Wayfinding is generally in the form of the C10 logos written on the floor or also signs which are yellow and blue and you can watch out for, I'll point them as we go. This little section here on Willow Walk going through an industrial estate is probably the worst bit of the route. You can see that there are one or two cars here and this is probably about as busy as it gets. That said, anybody who's able to ride a bike should really be able to manage this and you can see that there's plenty of other people using it even in the middle of the day on this rather grey overcast day on which I shot the video. If you look at these vehicles on the left however you'll see that this section of the route does suffer from illegal parking which does narrow the carriageway a little bit and makes things more difficult than it needs to be. At this junction by the way note the cycle signals on the left there which give us a head start over the main traffic heading into Linton Road. This turn coming up ahead on the right is probably the easiest one in the whole route to miss so just make sure that you get it. You can see the green and blue sign there indicating that you turn into Chaucer Drive. And with that turn we've gone back onto incredibly quiet filtered streets with no through traffic at all. I'm a big fan of Cycleway 10. I think it's a great example of a back street route that's done properly. These bollards and no entry signs really keep it incredibly quiet and in many ways it's actually more pleasant to ride than a protected cycleway running down a main road as you can really take your time, enjoy things and use the whole width of the carriageway. At peak commuting times or on summer evenings this route is absolutely rammed with people on bikes and you can tell why. The wayfinding is good, the cycling conditions are brilliant and it gets directly where you need to go without taking too many detours, exactly what a quiet way should be like. 
For those that don't know, the Quiet Ways programme was a Transport for London programme to develop cycleways through the back streets that could avoid main roads. It's a sensible approach because London does have quite constrained space on a lot of its main roads, especially because a lot of that space is used for bus lanes, which isn't necessarily the case in a lot of other cities which manage to run segregated cycle lanes down them. However, the Quiet Waste program was not a massive success, which may be surprising if you're riding on this video because Quiet Way 1, which was later renamed Cycleway 10 and that we're currently on, was very good. The issue was that actually building a good quiet way requires often as many interventions and as much political will as putting cycle tracks down a main road. That was forthcoming here which runs mostly through Southwark, a borough which has been really cooperative on cycling and is doing some pretty decent things. But unfortunately the quiet ways concept actually inherently appealed to boroughs which didn't really care about cycling and saw it as an excuse not to put cycle tracks down a main road, thinking that they could just stick a load of signs in the back streets instead and claim to be delivering safe cycle routes. So London is littered with quiet ways which, to be honest, aren't very good. For example, Quiet Way 4 through Wandsworth or Quiet Way 3 up through Westminster and Brent. If those don't sound like familiar cycle route names to you, that's because, to be honest, they were never really finished and there's only really a couple of signs around to show you that they ever existed at all. The programme was largely abandoned because it was really difficult to get these boroughs which didn't care about cycling to do the requisite interventions to make those routes safe. So was the Quiet Ways programme a failure? Well, I don't think that's exactly true. Quiet Way 1, C10 was good, but there was also Quiet Way 14 or Cycleway 14, which coincidentally or not also runs through Southwark and has a similar set of interventions with safe crossings and filters and is generally a nice ride that I would use in videos like this. But there's also another category of Quiet Way routes which started off quite poor but actually came into their own in the last couple of years with the introduction of low traffic neighbourhoods. Routes like Quietway 5 through Lambeth and Quietway 3 up through Islington and Hackney were originally very poor routes that just directed people through back streets with very few interventions, but they became really good after those boroughs started to introduce proper traffic calming measures across a wide area, totally separately to the Quietways programme, and now they're excellent routes. So yeah, in some respects, the Quiet Ways programme was a failure because it ran into too many obstacles and it was, of course, cancelled. But it also delivered probably about five or six now excellent cycle routes, even if it did most of those indirectly and kind of by accident after other interventions were added along that route. That's probably the longest I've ever talked about one subject on this channel in a video, so I hope that was alright and I hope people found that interesting, but yeah, that's my thoughts on Quiet Ways. We now find ourselves in Folkestone Gardens, and do remember that this space is shared with pedestrians, so don't ride too quickly and make sure you give everybody plenty of space. This is also where we're going to be turning off C10 and making our own way. The route up to New Cross follows mostly a road called Woodpecker Road, which is almost entirely pedestrian. It's pretty unique, I think, in London for a residential street like this to be so pedestrian and also be the main access road. There are, of course, lots of estates with paths and such, but it's really quite unusual to see such a wide shared path, which is the main access road to an estate and also a load of shops. This particular layout with the pedestrian path dates from the 1970s when the estate was built. It was previously just a normal road. 1970s town planning gets a bad reputation, sometimes deservedly so, but I think in this case we can thank the planners for doing a fantastic job. It really is a joy to cycle through. There's a crossing just here on the right and you press it and it's a toucan crossing so you can see the cycle symbol there. You are allowed to cycle over it. This then puts us into Fordham Park. Now, ideally, we would just be able to go straight on here as that street just dead ahead of us, Clifton Rise, goes right into the heart of New Cross. You can see it going up on the hill there on the right. Unfortunately, it is a one-way street and it doesn't have provision for two-way cycling. 
I was looking through some Lewisham Council documents recently and I actually saw that that street is on their list to be made two-way for bikes. And when that happens, hopefully in the next year or so, you'll be able to just go up there and come back down with leisure. However, until that happens, this is probably the most obvious legal way to get into New Cross. You go through the park and then you head up Pagnall Street just here. Unfortunately, as you can see from e.g. that van, it's not the quietest street and you do have to deal with a little bit of traffic to get into New Cross, which is just here, a sort of linear town spread along New Cross Road. But yeah, it's not too bad. It's only a second going up that hill, although it will be a lot nicer when we can just head up Clifton Rise directly. I will show that off when it changes. As you can see from the map, that's a really direct route. And that's probably the main reason that it's really quite competitive with the railway, which actually gives you a direct link straight from London Bridge Station into New Cross. So it is a very fast train. And despite that, it does make sense to cycle as well. Of course, the train takes a lot less than 25 minutes, but door to door, you can usually do the journey better on a bike or at least nearly as good. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit like and also subscribe. And if you really enjoyed it and you want to contribute to the Patreon, there's a link below. And thank you very much to everyone who already does so. Hope you enjoyed that video. Slightly different chat to usual, a little bit less history of the route and a little bit less in the way of directions, more in the way of a big rant about the Quiet Ways program. But I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys again next time.